In this video, we're going to talk about how to interact with a database using Java. The specific database we're going to use is SQLite, which is a full database management system that we can install as a Java library. However, most of what we'll talk about outside of the specific SQLite installation instructions and getting that set up is applicable to any database of your choice, whether it's Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, or whatever your choice of database is. So if you want to use a different database, that's fine, but you'll need to look up how to actually get the libraries you need installed in Eclipse so that you're able to have your code work with that database. Now, if you see this error, no suitable driver for JDBC SQLite CSE 205 DB, any error like that, it means that you don't have the libraries installed yet. I'll walk quickly through how to install that library. Just keep in mind that things will change and the way you install this may change faster than I update these videos. And so check on Canvas for the most recent directions. And if you're not currently taking my class, then a little bit of Googling should get you what you need. So this is the SQLite JDBC driver homepage, github.com slash zero slash SQLite dash JDBC. And of course this may change. So keep that in mind. In fact, a lot of the references I saw even from earlier this year still pointed to an older site. And if you scroll down, you'll see the download link. And what you're looking for is the latest jar file. This is what we want, and then we'll save this file. And keep in mind that the specific version is likely different once you're looking at this video. So we'll just save it on my C drive in a directory called Java, and I'll save that there. So if I select show in folder, you can see there's the file and I downloaded it on December 4th. So the next thing I need to do is install that jar package in my Eclipse project. So if I bring up Eclipse, I'll find the name of my project, right click on that and go to properties, then select libraries and class path. So then you'll select add external jars, then browse to the folder where your jar file is select it and then click to open and you can see there it is so i'll apply and close and now when i run my project it works as i would expect so here's our example code and it, this isn't an ideal example of how to work with databases this just get, shows you the things you can do especially when it comes to setting up the database and, and and we'll talk about that in a moment but you should be able to take this and adapt it to whatever your purposes are so the first thing we need to do is we're going to create a connection object. And that connection object is going to manage our connection to the database. And our get connection method, we pass the driver we want to use and then the name of the database. So once that's happened, we'll print that we've opened the database connection. We're actually going to create the table in our code. And so I want to delete it if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then this is going to throw an exception. And let me fix that formatting. And so if the exception happens, I don't care. The table doesn't exist, so I'll just keep moving. So the functions I'm going to do in my main method, I'm going to create a table, and we'll see how to do that. And then I'm going to insert several movies. And this insert movie method is going to take the connection information and then some information about movies. I had several here. Then I have a method that will display the database. And you'll notice all of this is done in a try catch block. So if anything happens here, if it's a SQL exception, then I'll print that there was some sort of mistake that we made. And then whether there's an exception or not, I will try to close the database connection. So you always want to get in the habit of just like with files and so forth. Once you're done with something, you want to clean it up and, and close anything that you've opened. So the methods we have, we have display database and display database is going to use a select statement and our select statement is we're going to select the asterisk means select everything i could specify the fields from the movies table of our database and we'll see how to create it later but select is a more common one to use so i create a string with the sql statement i want to execute i create a statement object and i also create a result set object so the statement object has a function called execute query i pass that some a string and it'll execute whatever string this is and then stores that in a result set object. So once that's done, I use the iterator in the result set to go through and print out each movie line by line. 
So to insert a movie, we're going to insert into the table name, and then we give it the fields we're going to insert and the values. And you'll notice here I use question marks, and the reason is we're going to use a prepared statement. So the prepared statement is a special object in Java that lets us, instead of working with strings, we can work with these objects. And you'll notice here I set the first string to the title, the second string to a director, I set the third parameter to an integer, and I set the fourth parameter to a string rating. And so now whatever values were passed into this method get populated in this prepared statement object, and then the prepared statement object has its own execute command. I don't need to create a regular statement like I did before, and then I execute update that executes the SQL command. So the last two methods we have are to create the table. So there you see that we have a string that is going to create our movie table with three varchar fields. That's essentially think of that as a string. It's alphanumeric data of 25 characters or, or five characters for the rating. And then the year is an integer. So here I create a statement object and then call that statement objects execute method with the, the SQL string that I want to execute it. And then finally, I have delete table. Delete table, a lot of it you can see is the same code that we have above, except that we change our string is now drop table movie. So we say drop table and then give it the name of the table and that deletes it. So when I run this, you can see we open the connection, we insert some data, and then here's our database. And just as a reminder, just so that we always do that create table, we do this this work here. And, and probably we could, we could restructure this so that we try to create the table which if it's not deleted would fail and that's fine but this is just there because if you already have that existing table it's easier to delete it first so that's some a quick example of working with the database in java